Yeah, you know, I've been, I've been reading up, up about her case, and I have to say, I, I, I mentioned to you that this is my first time in Malta, um, and as I would mention to colleagues, you know, other writers, other, other journalists that I was coming here, they would all talk about, about Daphne. I mean, her story, her case is one that anybody who works in journalism around the world is paying attention to. And, you know, I'm a member of Penn, you know, and su support the Committee uh, um, to Protect Journalists. And there has been this unanimous call from all of these different organizations, and I know you've heard about it, for there to be an independent inquiry to really find out with, with seriousness and, and, and independence what happened, how it can be prevented, the links with the journalism that she was doing. Um, and I understand that this is a very, you know, partisan country um, and that there are different factions here and it's really hard not to see something like this through the lens of partisanship, right? Um, I have no doubt that I would have had political agreement, disagreements uh, with Daphne, but that's not what this is about, right? I mean, yep. thinking about what we were talking about before, the fact that, um, you know, it, it, it is hard for a small country like Malta to figure out what its economic niche is in the neoliberal global era. I mean, and I don't pretend to have the answers, but what we all know is that successive governments in Malta have made a series of decisions to pretty much throw in with the shadow economy, right? To do various things, whether it's selling citizenship, um, you know, whether it's a very, very, that very, very low 5% corporate tax rate, um, to, you know, or whether it's online gaming, to, to create opportunities for some pretty shady characters. And so what Daphne was, was, what, what Daphne was doing with her journalism, um, what it was tapping into, regardless of what people's, you know, opinion is of her, right? That's, that's really important, because if, if Malta's gonna throw in on the shadow economy, sunlight is your best disinfectant. You need as many checks and balances uh, as possible to prevent, you, you know, this from turning into a mafia state. And investigative journalists are a big part of that. So, you know, this is not just about our profession. It's not just about the fact that we need journalists to be protected. We need governments not to make light of such a serious crime. It needs to be investigated. I personally strongly support the calls for an independent inquiry. And, I, and what chills me is the joking, you know? I mean, just today, to hear that your justice minister is using Instagram to ask his followers if they like his beard better now you know, that him being clean shaven in the picture, which was, you know, on the memorial wall, um, that communicates a message of a lack of seriousness about this crime. And when high up officials act like that, it sends a message that journalists are fair game. That's what's happening with Trump, when every day he's out there going fake news, fake news, you're the enemy of the people. I'm sorry, I linked that with the Saudi Arabian government thinking that they could do to Jamal Khashoggi what they did to him because they're hearing this from their most important ally. So we all, whatever our political differences are, have to understand how serious it is. This is no joking matter. It matters to writers. We're at you know, a, a fair celebrating writing. But it also matters to democracy. It really matters to democracy. So that's the end of my rant. Well, thank you for I'm going to butt out. <laughs> and I think, and I think our audience does appreciate it because it's, it's also, I say it's, it's a question of respect, but it's true even in Malta. The way a politician speaks is very influential, and uh, the way people get treated, um, uh, I, I say treated, but the way journalists are spoken about by politicians obviously carries with the voters. And that relation with journalism, even investigative journalism, uh, tends to be somewhat because of the way journalists get portrayed. So, so thank you for that. Thank you for, for mentioning that. Uh, 